In this session, we are going to look at continuous deployment with Clarif. I have here a web page for my JBoss server, and I want to make changes to that web page. And once I have made the changes, I will commit to the repository, and that commit will kick off an event, and that event will launch a job that will build and deploy my changed application to my JBoss server in the dev environment. I have here my index file and I'm gonna make change, a change to that index file. Just add something to it. And save that. And I will now commit that to my repository, which in my case is a JIT repository. So I will call this a JIT commit and just commit my changes. And this is interfacing with Clarif, so I will log on, I'll give my credentials for Clarif. And now I have pushed my commit up to Clarif. Looking now at what happens in Clarif, here we have the tool. We have now in our monitor where jobs are running a job that has that will start. This is a post offline event, so it takes a few seconds to start. And now we have a job running for the development environment that it's a job created by Clarif coming from my commit to the repository. It's currently running. It's got multiple phases. It's running the check phase. Now it's in the run phase. It also tells me that it's working on the JIT commit. That's the revision that I've made. And once it has gone through the run phase, it it will do a post where we have to uh, do things like updating CIs, updating the metadata. And after the post it finishes, at any time we can go and see what has happened. But when we look now at our web page, just changing it, we can see that the changes were brought to the JBoss server and deployed on that JBoss server by Clarif. Uh, we can have here the job and have a look at the full log where we will see what happened during that job processing. We had to check on the init step and we had the pre-step where we did the build. In this case we've detected we had a war file and we have built this with Maven. We have taken the backup of the old war file and then the next step which is the run step which is the actual deploy. We have deployed a new war file. We have validated our web, our URL, and if everything is okay, we have executed the post step. Now, from here on, we have our new, our changes in the development environment, and depending on how the organization is working, we can act on this and continue with this. The first thing that can be, if a company would like to group changes into a release or group changes into a sprint is that we need a container where we keep our revisions. So we have automatically created a change set which is a Clarif topic with a relation to our JIT revision and we can view from here the changes that I've made so that's the line that I have made in that change and that change set can now be grouped into a release, can now be grouped into a sprint for further deployment if this organization is working in a button-up or a top-down release management. Another thing we could do is we could just have our automated tested running and, if, and they went fine and they went okay. So we, we just kick off the next job that will bring our changes from the development environment to the QA environment. And in the QA environment, we automatically have run a job and we have paused it because it's now it's waiting for an approval. 
it's well possible that in the development environment we had to do some manual checking and that we can't rely completely on the automated testing. So we, we will just prepare everything to go to QA but wait for an approval before we do the actual deploy. Looking at this job, you will see in the full log that we have run the pre-step that has done the build for the, the QA environment and we have taken the backup in the QA environment and we have paused before the run, before the actual, before the actual uh, deployment to the QA environment. So looking at the QA environment, we won't have the same version as we have in the, in the dev environment. We have an older version uh, with uh, an HTML page that hasn't been uh, uh, that has been formatted. And now we, what we can do is, uh, in the monitor of Clarif, we can just give that approval for that particular task. We say, well, we have done, we have checked in development, it's okay, so we just approve this. Say, go and approve it. And this will continue the job, and the job will start the run phase, which is the actual deploy that we have also seen in the development environment. So refreshing the monitor, we will see that now the run step is being executed. And we are executing the post step. These steps get executed. And once we will have this job finished, we will see in the QA environment that now when we refresh this one, we also have the formatted HTML page. It tells us which job we have variables that we have substituted, which job has brought it to which environment, and we have the changed version of the index file that we before brought to development, and we now have in QA. Again, in QA, we will run our automated testing and we will kick off a job for the next environment, whether that's production or pre-production. And we can do that with an approval weight. We can do that without an approval weight if there isn't anything manual to be checked and the deployment will go on. So here, without a minimal or no manual intervention, I have brought a change from a commit to my repository to the development, to the QA environment, and so on, to any environment that I have defined for this particular life cycle, for this particular application. This is all done with the Clarif ruling system. And Clarif works on event-driven rules. So I have here event-driven rules. I have an event-driven rule that will create a chain set when I have repository update, and it will create a job will create a job based on a pipeline and in this case the main complete pipeline which is a pipeline that we also use for the QA environment that we use for the production environment it is an, it is an agnostic pipeline that gets variables substituted depending on the project depending on the environment depending on the platforms and that job gets run and once it it runs we will relaunch the same uh, another job based on the same pipeline for the next environment that we have in the life cycle. Pipelines are agnostic, as I said. So the main complete pipeline, we have this check in it and pre-step. And in the case that we had, we were working with a war file. So for the projects, we were checking every nature that might have been in and for the war file you can see that these are the steps that we executed that for each is a maven build for each pump file we have <coughs> done the maven uh, package and for each affected war file we had done the backup and then in the run step in the case in case we had a war file <coughs> which was the case in here we just deployed it rename deploy the war file we also validated the the url and in the post step, we updated the status. And by now, the chain set that was in ready for QA should have been transitioned automatically to the status in QA, which is the case. So this is how we can, from a commit to a repository, build and deploy to the various environments that we have in the life cycle.